Kayonda, thanks for watching Doing Life with Jenny. If you if you are new here, I am currently a Spanish teacher in the US, but I am soon moving to Mexico. I'm building the house in the state of Hidalgo. There Lola goes with her digging in the covers. Her favorite pastime. A few videos ago, we talked about what you need to do before moving to another country, specifically Mexico, in my case, and probably yours if you're watching this video. So do you need to learn Spanish? The short answer is yes, you need to learn Spanish or the language of whatever country you're going to be moving to. We'll just get the blunt reason out of the way. It is very rude of you not to, especially if you are from the US. Like it or not, gringos are known for being anti-immigrant and having the idea that everybody should learn English, especially those coming to the US. While you personally may not have those beliefs, it is the polite thing to learn a language before moving to another country. Now, do I think you need to be 100% fluent before moving there? Uh, yes and no. So let's get into that. So why don't you need to be fluent? Because I think that comes for most people once you move there, probably in your home country, you don't have a way to like really immerse yourself to the point to become fluent. So that is understandable. Two, there are a lot of people in Mexico that do speak English, especially in the expat communities. Side note, you are not an expat unless you plan on returning to your home country. If you plan on staying in your new country indefinitely, you are an immigrant. I do find it pretty common for young professionals in big cities to know English. However, by not being comfortable to fluent in Spanish, you are going to experience a lot of struggles. So let me explain why. One, it's just going to be safer. You're less likely to be taken advantage of. You're less likely to be the target of a scam. And it's just going to help you be more aware of your surroundings. You can understand what others around you are saying. Or if there's some important announcement on the news at an event, you'll be able to understand. Next, it's important for you to know Spanish so that it saves you time and money. Think about it. Let's say you just got to Mexico and you want to go get a cell phone so you can have a Mexican number. You're going to have to hunt somebody down that is bilingual that can assist you. You're going to need to know that they are reliable and trustworthy. The last thing you want to do is give a stranger your personal information that then wanders off with it and does who knows what with it. When you're getting settled in Mexico and getting everything set up, you're going to have to share a lot of personal information. The less people that have that information, the better. And the more times you have to use an interpreter, the more you're putting your personal information out there. Sticking to the cell phone example, I imagine when you wanna go, you wanna go, and you don't wanna wait around on somebody else's schedule to be able to take you. Also, unless they are a friend of yours, they're going to charge you. Living in Mexico, you're going to need Spanish all day, every day. And although you might be fine at Walmart or at the market buying some fruit, you're probably going to need an interpreter regularly and that adds up quickly. And if you do happen to have a friend that can help you, I imagine this will become burdensome and annoying to them to always have to help you. The friendship might even start to feel a little transactional. Let's say you're not fluent in Spanish, but you don't need an interpreter because that particular place has someone on staff that speaks English. For example, you need to go to the doctor or the dentist or hire a lawyer. Well, don't you think they're going to charge you more for being bilingual? or you might also get the gringo price. Then lastly, without knowing Spanish, you can never fully integrate into society. You're always going to feel like an outsider. If you really want to understand your new country, its people and its culture, you're going to have to learn Spanish. Yes, it is possible to make friends with locals that know English. Not every word or phrase we have in English can be translated with the correct connotation. And the same goes from Spanish to English. So you might be lacking a little bit in the culture department or fully understanding your local friend, even if they do speak English. Before I go into the second part of the video where I share how I became fluent in Spanish, let me conclude the first part by saying again, I think it is extremely rude for you to show up to another country and have little to no intention in learning their language, but living there. Before I explain to you how I learned Spanish, 
I'm going to mention the two links in the description box. One is a link to my Spanish YouTube channel where you can get free immersive classes. And two is a link to a self-guided course. I started learning Spanish in the year 2000, on my freshman year of high school. I did not want to take Spanish. I was terrified because I heard bad things about the teacher not liking freshmen. But lo and behold, I got my schedule and there was Spanish. But I fell in love with it the first day of class. There was just something fascinating about me being able to say something my friends and family didn't understand. So during my high school days, this was the time of AOL Messenger and Yahoo Messenger, where you could search from people from all around the globe to chat with. So regularly, I would go home and find people from Spanish-speaking countries, and I would practice my Spanish. At first, it would just be, hi, how are you? What's your name? And gradually, I could talk about my likes and dislikes and engage in small chat. I did great in all four years of high school Spanish, but honestly, the teacher wasn't the type to only speak Spanish to us. There was a fair amount of English, but it was a great start. Once I graduated from high school in 2004, that's when I buckled down to get fluent. I started going to the local Mexican restaurant where a lot of the guys spoke little to no English. So I befriended them and I would go hang out with them every single day that summer after graduating high school. I would just go hang out at the restaurant the last hour that they were opened because there weren't many other customers so they would have a chance to talk to me. And we would also hang out outside of the restaurant too. They would come over to my house so they could see what an American family lives like and to go swimming. And I would also go hang out with them at their apartments. I remember at the beginning of the summer, for the most part, I could express what I was trying to say. Like I would have to reword things because I didn't know the word, but I could at least explain myself. But when they spoke to me, I was having to look up a lot of words in the dictionary. This was like pre-smartphone, so I had the physical dictionary I took with me. I remember the first word I learned was un rato, a while, like a little while, because I was picking them up at their apartment and they asked if I had waited on them outside for a while. And I'm like, un rato? And I looked it up, I'm like, oh, okay. That was the first word I learned with them. I also remember the first time hearing them speaking on the phone in Spanish. With me, they didn't use a lot of slang because we were just starting to get to know each other and they knew I wasn't fluent yet. But on the phone, oh my goodness, Mexicans use so much slang. It's like almost a whole different language. And by the end of the summer, I was able to catch on to that as well. In 2005, that's when I met my ex-husband who is from Mexico and I made my first trip down to Mexico. My ex-husband's family does not speak any English. Well, his sister does now, but at that time she did not. The ex-husband is fluent in English, but at home we would primarily speak Spanish. And in the last video, I told you all about going to Mexico, seeing his family, and just traveling to Mexico in general. I also lived in Argentina for a month to work on my master's program. I did go to Puerto Rico, but honestly I didn't speak much Spanish. But my Puerto Rico trip is like the one trip I went on with a friend who is also from the US. She does happen to speak Spanish as well, um, but we spoke to each other in English. And anytime we would try to speak Spanish to the Puerto Ricans, they would answer us in English. It is a US territory. And maybe they assumed that we knew very little Spanish. When I went to Costa Rica, I kind of found the same to be true. I would speak to them in Spanish and they would try to answer me in English. I guess I was mostly in the touristy areas there. Oh, actually, Costa Rica is the other trip that I went on with somebody else. Um, they didn't speak Spanish. And Costa Rica's economy thrives on tourism. So I guess that kind of makes sense that it was hard to find people that would respond back to me in Spanish. And then the only other Spanish-speaking country I have gone to is Ecuador. I was there for a month in 2021. And I only spoke Spanish the whole time. Once my Mexican husband and I divorced, I felt that my Spanish went downhill a bit. Once I started returning to Mexico again after the divorce, um, I've made more friends and I speak Spanish with them. Um, I do listen to music in Spanish. It is, it is hard to find TV shows I like in Spanish or movies. One, I don't own a TV. Two, I don't have like Netflix or Hulu or anything. That's part of the problem. Last time I had Netflix, I did find a good series I liked called Silvana Sin Lana. Um, otherwise, for the most part, they're just not shows I'm interested in and I cannot force myself to watch it no matter what language it is in. 
if I'm traveling in a Spanish-speaking country and the Airbnb has TV or Netflix or something like that, I do try to watch a whole series or watch several movies just because there's a better variety of options so I will find something I like, whereas here um, it's just not as available. I do have a few YouTube channels I follow that are in Spanish. Otherwise, I just chat with my friends from Mexico. But once you start learning a language or once you have learned a language, you do still have to keep up with it. It's not just there and then you never use it again and it sticks, kind of like riding a bike. Like it will be easy for it to come back once you have learned it, but it is very easy to lose. There are just so many situations one can be in to have like more specific vocabulary that you wouldn't use daily, like tools or things in the kitchen or going to the hair salon. Like those would be very easy to lose if you're not using them regularly. Whereas like describing yourself, daily conversation, that's easier to keep because you're more likely to practice that on a regular basis. So yeah, if learning Spanish is one of your goals for 2023, be sure to check out the links in the description box. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you would like to continue and follow me in my journey in moving from the US to Mexico, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. See you in the next video, guys. Adios.